uh, here at Winslow Farm, just taking a little stroll, gonna find some trees that are suitable for log inoculation. Hi everyone, I'm John from North Spore Mushrooms. I'm one of the co-founders and the head mycologist. We're out here in the main woods, it's about mid-March, to find a log to grow shiitake on. This has always been the traditional time for uh, felling a tree and cutting logs. And the reason is this time of year, tree species retain all of the sugars and energy they've accumulated during the summer months into the wood, right? So when we're cutting the tree down now, it's got the highest energy potential. Now that being said, as growers have continued to experiment with log cultivation, we've also found out that you can cut down a tree pretty much anywhere from midsummer into late fall. And there's different techniques depending on the time of year you cut the tree. But today we're gonna to be focusing on this sort of midwinter inoculation and what's involved with that process. We're here, we finally found the tree that we're gonna to use today. We've got a nice oak, and this is the tree we selected again because we're cultivating shiitake mushrooms. So this oak is the perfect diameter, right? We're looking for a tree that's anywhere from four to six inches in diameter, and then we can see that because this sort of starts around that diameter, we're gonna get a lot of usable log lengths out of that. When thinking about cutting down trees, we usually try to get people to think about the sustainability of woodlot management, right? So we could theoretically cut down that one right there. This is a better log. It's a smaller diameter. It will help this tree grow larger and then repopulate the stand that we have here. We also have our tractor here. Um, this is gonna help us once we cut up our logs to haul them out of the woods and then bring them to a warmer location where we can do the inoculation. here and we've brought our logs into this greenhouse which considering it's mid-march this makes it a little bit warmer as a workspace so if you happen to have a greenhouse on your property this works really well workshops anything like that uh, it's also really nice to have power because then you can use things like this crock pot here which we have for melting our wax so we're going to take this log we've cut and we're going to inoculate it with shiitake mushroom spawn uh, the spawn we're using today is sawdust spawn so this is just the mushroom mycelium that we've grown on sawdust. And we're gonna be drilling holes throughout the log, filling those holes with sawdust, and then sealing them with wax. And that's basically the process. And I'm just gonna go through that process, show you how it's done, and show you some of the tools that we use to accomplish that. The first step of the process is actually drilling the holes in the log. Uh, you can use a hand drill for this but it makes uh, the drilling part probably the slowest part of the process. So what we really recommend, especially if you're doing more than say like five logs, is to actually upgrade and get an angle grinder adapter that allows you to use a mushroom drill bit with an angle grinder versus a hand drill. Um, so that's what this is here. This is our angle grinder adapter. And then what we also use is a specialized drill bit. And this drill bit is Basically, the right size that you need for sawdust spawn, it also has a stopper on it that goes to the right depth in the log, and it's designed to shoot out the chips, clearing the hole. So we'll use these two pieces in conjunction on an angle grinder. 
And this is the angle grinder with that all installed, that setup. So we've got the adapter and then the 12 millimeter bit that goes on here. And this bit is specifically designed to work with this inoculation tool. And so this tool is what allows us to get the sawdust from the bag into the hole. It's set up so that it fits with that 12 millimeter size of the drill bit. In order to drill this log, we're gonna be using this angle grinder with the tools that I mentioned. So the adapter and the 12 millimeter bit. Because this spins at such a high RPM, it makes the process a lot faster. Uh, so I'll demonstrate that now. So you can see that went pretty quickly. And what you wanna do with that hole spacing is you want each hole to be about four to six inches apart. And then you do a row down the entire length of the log. Once you've gotten that first row completed, you'll just turn the log and then do a second row staggered relative to the first. And that distance between rows is about two to three inches. Um, and then you're gonna be basically putting those holes in a diamond pattern. Uh, so I'll do that second row now and just kind of continue around the log. So now that we've drilled holes throughout the entire circumference of the log, uh, we're gonna fill those holes with sawdust spawn. And so today we're using shiitake, but this procedure is pretty much the same regardless of the mushroom species that you're using. All right, easy access. So we're gonna be using this inoculation tool and pretty much how this works is you just jam this into the sawdust a few times, it loads the end of this tool and then it injects it into the holes. So see that's pretty good, it's pretty flush. And then we'll just go around and do that to all the holes. The last stage of the process is just sealing those holes with wax. Um, so one thing that we've found that's really good for keeping wax heated is this crock pot here. This just, you set it at low, gets it heated, and then keeps it at that temperature for as long as you're doing your project. We just use these little wax daubers, get them saturated, and then put a little bit of wax on top of each hole here. And you pretty much just go like this around the entire circumference of the log. So now that we've gotten each hole sealed with wax, the last stage of the process is just sealing the ends of the logs with wax. Now, strictly speaking, this isn't necessary if you live in a really damp climate like we do here in New England. But what that does is it just helps retain moisture in the logs. So this is especially useful if you live in a really dry climate or expect to have dry summers. But the other thing that it does, and the reason that we typically do it, is it allows the mycelium to colonize the log all the way to the end of the log and it allows us to see the mycelium that way. So we can kind of check on the logs, make sure they're colonizing well. So that's the main advantage to waxing the ends that we like to see, but especially useful if you're in a drier climate. The best way we've found to do this, you could just use a paintbrush to paint on the wax, but we just like to lift up the log and dip it into the crock pot.
So here we are at a Winslow Farms shiitake log location. Uh, you can see they have all these logs stacked here for fruiting. In many ways, this is an ideal location. We've got a lot of evergreen trees um, with pretty low branches, which helps keep it shady, keep it cool during the summer months. It's hard to see at this time of year, but there's actually a pond right beyond the logs here. And that way, whenever there's a dry spell, they can just throw the logs into the pond, get them hydrating. Or if they want to force fruit the logs, they can throw the logs into the pond and get a rotational fruiting schedule that way. One thing that I'll talk about while we're here is how to stack logs and how you should manage your logs once you have them and they're fully colonized. Once you create your first mushroom log, you actually don't want to stack them like this. So this is a setup for fruiting the mushrooms. What you want to do is you want to keep those logs very close to the ground. So you would lay out some pallet wood, put the logs close to the ground, uh, and that way that keeps them humid. That's the most humid part of the forest is right by the forest floor. When we do get winter and we get a snowfall, that snow actually covers the log and keeps them protected. One of the biggest things that's going to cause problems with your shiitake logs is that they'll dry out especially in winter when the air is super dry. So if they're exposed like these ones are, they're gonna be more prone to drying out uh, during the winter months. Um, and so these look like there's some actually freshly inoculated logs over here. So this is more what you wanna do. You wanna keep them low to the ground. Um, this is actually nice because you can see they're starting to colonize. All this white on the ends of the logs is actually the mushroom mycelium. So this is a pretty good setup here. If you are sort of intensively managing your logs, you would also, right before the winter, you would want to take those stacks down and put them low to the ground so that they don't dry out. Obviously, there's a lot more labor in that, right? So, which is probably why these have just been left here. In terms of stacking the logs during the summer months, this is actually a really ideal setup, right? The reason that this is a good setup is that it allows for airflow around the log. So there, for one, it's easy to pick the mushrooms once they fruit, and that airflow encourages fruiting all around the logs. So a lot of times people will keep their logs low to the ground um, during the winter and then stack them up like this during for fruiting season during the summer.